yeah, these headphones are really fucking big. And I got a good microphone here, too. It's far better than the other headset that I use, which is, by the way, almost completely broken. Today, I'm going to make another video in defense of Gamergate. So, who's this asshole? It's disturbing, your first story. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you alluded to it before, yeah. about women in tech being mm -hmm. harassed. This is, this is, this has gotten serious, Chris. Very serious. I mean, to the point, I mean, we, we talked six weeks ago about that, how yeah. Anita Sarkeesian, uh, that the police were finally getting involved in that. And since then, it has really escalated. Uh, last week, Anita Sarkeesian, she had a talk at a university down in the States, and it had to be canceled because they received threats, serious threats, of a man who uh, was claiming that he was going to cause the worst school shooting in history. One, the letter was proven to be fake and the schools were never in danger. And two, don't you think that it's a bit odd to send a fucking death threat to Anita Sarkeesian towards the people, to, towards the university, to, to make an announcement killing all these innocent children just for the sake of a, someone's opinion? Don't you find it rather odd? And uh, what I will tell you is it's called Gamergate, mm -hmm. and that's a hashtag on Twitter. And uh, it's about 8,000 and 10,000 tweets are posted every day about this. It's become something that's consumed a, a large number of people. And it's two things, really. First, it is an, uh, a campaign of online harassment. Same typical SJW argument. You know, Gamergate is only a movement that to harass women despite the fact that you've done no fucking research whatsoever. It's like you SJWs don't care on the what the opposing team has to say. You just care on what you have to say. And if they these people don't accept your worldview, then you're a sexist, misogynist bigot. That has been specifically targeting now four women in the last couple of months. But it also, and this is what makes it confusing, is a large number of well-meaning, mm -hmm. good-intentioned uh, gamers, youth, people in their teens and 20s, who have been drawn by this to become concerned with issues that they think is very important and still need to be talked about despite uh, the threats. And that's... It's like you assholes decide that the best way to counteract Gamergate is by strawmanning them to the point where it can't be strawman anymore, ignoring any good deeds that Gamergate has brought up, such as donation drives and, you know, allowing women to be a part of Gamergate. I mean, it's like you deliberately ignore that and just focus on just the death threats. That's it. You guys are fucking assholes. What makes this very, very confusing for parents, I think, to try to understand what's going on. Because you go online, you do research, and you'll find, you know, people who are just like your son or your daughters who are like, yay, Gamergate. And, you know, Gamergate represents threatening women with rape and with death wow. and, and horrible things. And clearly, you have done no fucking research. If you actually did, you would realize that Gamergate has been raising fucking money and have lots and lots of women in support of Gamergate. I don't have to be worried about being told I'm too old to be playing games. Because I'm female, no one will call me a man baby or claim that I need to grow up simply because I choose to play games. It'll also not automatically be assumed that I'm a nerd or a virgin. As a female gamer, I don't have to worry about people assuming based on the fact that I play video games that I'm a loser living in my parents' basement. I, I live in the dining room. That's how cool I am. As a female, people will be willing to censor popular titles and content for the sole purpose of not upsetting my feces, which hurts my feces. So, stop it! As a female, I can openly admit that I do not play video games, and yet people will continue to hand me money Lots and lots of money just to hear my opinions on them. Who will be willing to devalue themselves and their entire gender 
in order to place me on a pedestal solely because I am female. I will never have to worry about having a sufficient party in order to complete raids. Female. Being female ensures that I will have available allies willing to contribute to my success. As a female gamer, I can make blanket statements about gamers of genders that I am not a part of and cannot relate to in any real life situations and I will receive unwavering, widespread support from the media. Because I am a female, I will be far more influential in the social politics of in-game communities because I am seen as a rarity. And that's just a small sample. Not even the bottom of the barrel, not even the tip of the barrel, but like a little chip, a little chip from the barrel. Uh, they get together and they look for people online who they can target with harassment. And they've been doing this for a couple of years, targeting specifically women, and especially women in certain issues that may be sort of, you know, touch button issues. These trolls on the internet are trolls, okay? Most of these guys don't really care on whether or not Anita Sarkeesian is a female or a male. And the people who target Anita Sarkeesian... They're not targeting her because of her gender or the, the fact that she's a feminist. What, why they're targeting her is because what she says is total fucking bullshit. Um, this year, that escalated when in the summertime, they chose as a target a woman named Zoe Quinn. They chose her because she designed a video game about depression called Depression Quest. And when it came out, uh, it wasn't something that she had planned. It just happened to launch on the same day that Robin Williams had, had passed, and mental health was a big issue. Which I agree that there's no there's no reason to go a, a massive hissy fit just because of someone making a game based on depression and someone died due to depression. I mean, I didn't really care about that. You know, if the game is good, then I don't give a fuck. So she received a lot of attention in the press. I mean, it's the kind of story that we as journalists love. A yeah. woman has designed a game. It's about depression, mm -hmm. very brave. Um, she had an ex-boyfriend that was upset at the attention that she was getting. Didn't like the fact that she was being praised as this wonderful person. So he wrote a reveal tell-all suggesting that she wasn't very nice, that she had cheated on him and things like that. This group oh. that does these online harassment campaigns decided this was too good to give up. And they went after Zoe Quinn with harassments of threat and rape and violence. And, uh, but specifically what they did was they campaigned the idea that this wasn't them being malicious or mean, but they were concerned about ethics because the suggestion was that this woman, Zoe Quinn, had slept with reporters in order to get attention mm -hmm. to her game depression. And what happened, this is where things get really confusing, is that seemed to touch a nerve, a fear, and insecurity in a lot of young people today who play video games. They were led to believe that they need to be concerned that as we get into issues of women in video games, that political correctedness is going to take over video games and take away their opportunity to play games in which there are big macho men mm -hmm. and there are very sexually uh, accessible young ladies. And so we've had, over the last couple of months, about 8,000, 10,000 young people who genuinely think that there's a real protest to be involved here. Oh, no, 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 you're right. You don't want to take away our video games. You just want to dictate on which video games we should play. Seriously, there's a girl named Nicole who manages, who manages to ban GTA 5 because what she experienced in real life, she was raped. And she had, you know, she was trying to recover for 10 years. And that video game reminds her on that rape. So she made that petition to get rid of GTA 5 in order to make herself feel better for herself to end violence towards women fuck you and the worst part is is that Jonathan McIntosh is denying the fact that this is not a form of censorship it's just you know giving in to the demands of of, 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 of of these people yeah <laughs> it's not censorship it's not censorship to get rid of a fucking game that a certain group of people do not like. When these people could have just say, I don't like the game. It's too violent. It's not for me. Therefore, I should not buy it. Oh. Oh. The hypocrisy is outstanding.
So they're really m being misled as far as you're concerned. This is just, this is fun and a, and a power high yeah. for a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what about the social platforms? Don't they, can't they stop this? Well, so here's how things get really interesting. When initially those stories started to come about, Zoe Quinn, and then eventually you have uh, Anita Sarkeesian, um, the initial reaction, I think, for a lot of people was just, if you ignore it, it'll go away. If you don't feed the trolls, if you don't give them attention, what they did not understand was that these trolls were getting attention from all these young people that were rallying to their cause. Oh, for fuck's sakes, where do you even get this theory? That, you know, these teens are giving Gamergate the power to go after Anita Sarkis and going after Zoe Quinn, when, in reality, we decided to just gang up Join together to say, no, we are sick and tired of people like Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, uh, Rihanna Wu, and whoever decides to, you know, think that games need to change just for their fucking benefits. Oh, oh the stupid is strong in this one. And a good example of just how confusing that is, is that they went after a woman named Lee Alexander. She noticed that very few people were actually talking about this. We talked about it six mm -hmm. weeks ago, but nobody else was. So she wrote an article. So these trolls managed to gather their army of well-meaning youths and had them write a letter campaign to the advertisers on her website. Intel actually pulled their ads in response because what they saw were hundreds and thousands of emails coming to them from well-intended youth saying they were concerned about this woman's uh, editorial, that it was too controversial, they shouldn't support it. Intel pulled their ads. So even Intel became duped by this. So, in a nutshell, what you're trying to say is that the Gamergate, who are, the Gamergators, who are, you know, well above uh, the adult age, are pulling the strings against these teenagers, making them think that, you know, Gamergate is all cool and all hip. In reality, Gamergate is just a evil plan to get rid of women in video games. You know, so we control these teenagers, making them think that they're doing something good. In reality, they're doing something bad. Sending them letters towards um, companies like Intel, making them think that these are well-intentioned teenagers that are very concerned, when in reality they're being fooled by Gamergate to do their fucking bidding. Bravo. Bravo. I have never heard such a pathetic conspiracy in my entire life. Intel later on has issued an apology, saying they did not fully understand the issues, and what they were trying to do was try not to take sides, and invariably did take sides. So this has been what has been very confusing in terms of this, and it's been going on for months. Wow. Now, this past week, with Brianna Wu, the latest woman to be sent from her home, including her husband, and having to bring in the police. Which has been proven to be false. She never left her home. Um... A guy named Ver Verimo, that's his name, has um, showed clips of it, proving it to be completely false. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to watch. What has happened is we're starting to find people actually talking about this. So you have game designers who are coming out and saying, look, I was hesitant to even talk about this. I didn't want to address it, but I'm finally going to do it. Journalists are starting to do the same. And what has been a major turning point is that you have now celebrities weighing in. So John Stewart from The Daily Show, Seth Rogen, Patton Oswalt, uh, Will Wheaton. Uh, the list has been going on and on and on. And a lot of the young people who have been involved in this are now standing back and having second thoughts as to their involvement in what they thought was a protest when they're starting to realize that all their heroes are saying, look, this is really hateful and misogynistic, and you really have to kind of think about what you're doing and not be involved in something that's causing a lot of harm for a lot of people. And there are just as many people who are famous who are in favor of Gabergate. And, and you're being manipulated. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't really understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, when you're young, you want to be along to a social yep. tribe. Yep. You want to yep. have an identity. And when there's a protest, 
when there's something to fight against, that can be very, very attractive. And that's every been, generation has. I was going to say, youth culture has had that going on every single generation in their own way, in their wherever the culture is at the time. Yeah. And the people who've been perpetuating this online campaign, they understand that because they try to create their own websites that they couch this as being us versus yeah. them. Just another SJW who's just been a full Macintosh, ladies and gentlemen. Full Macintosh. I am the Atheist Gamer. Peace the game out. If you enjoy watching this video, click on the like button. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and ugh, Google+. We all know Google+, fucking sucks.